What's going on, everybody? This is another edition of the 2023 version of the 30 to 1 MLB Countdown Previews brought to you by JohnPielli.com and, of course, the Past Ball Show. I'm John Pielli. Uh, for those that don't know how I put together this uh, countdown preview type of thing, it's my baseball preview show that I've done for the last 12 years. And I look at the Vegas over-unders and I try to figure out which one I, whether I think the win total is going to be higher or lower than projected, kind of like most people do. And then I come up with an actual win total. I rank them highest to lowest. The highest would be number one. The lowest would be number 30. And then I start doing my previews in an inverse order, starting with the team I think is going to finish with the worst record. Today I'm talking about the Baltimore Orioles. The Baltimore Orioles have been in Baltimore since the year of 1954. Prior to that, from the years of 1902 to 1953, they were known as the St. Louis Browns. In 1901, which a lot of people don't know, they were actually the Milwaukee Brewers. The Orioles have won World Series championships in the years of 1966, 1970, and 1983. As the St. Louis Browns were in the World Series, losing to the Cardinals in 1944, they were back in the World Series in 1969, 71, and 79. They haven't been back to the World Series since their last victory, which came in, in uh, 1983. And really for the first time in probably about five or so years, there's a little bit of promise when it comes to the look of the Baltimore Orioles. They finished with an 83 and 79 record. Some people may say it was a little bit of a surprise. Um, I think this is kind of a young team kind of coming into its own. Obviously in a competitive American League East division, I don't think a lot of people would have expected the Orioles to be as good as they were, but uh, they're very fundamentally sound. I think from an organizational standpoint, They've been pretty well run. There were some doubts coming into the 2022 season whether Mike Elias, the general manager, was the right man to lead the franchise forward. Obviously, there's a ton of good young talent. And what really was needed to see was the fact that some of this, there was going to be some fruits to it. And it really started with Adley Rushman coming up last year. And Really, the leadership from such a young player really put the team uh, in, in a position where it was much better than it was prior to that. So, um, big losses. Um, not really. They didn't really lose that many big time players. I mean, Jordan Lyles pitched a lot of innings for them last year. He ended up going off to Kansas City. Robinson Carinos was a backup catcher for them. Is not back. Ruffnet Odor ended up leaving as a free agent. Now they gained Adam Frazier. A very good utility type of player that is an everyday player. Will play a lot of second base, but can also play the outfield. Uh, Kyle Gibson was brought in as a free agent. Cole Irwin was acquired from the Oakland Athletics in a trade. And then they brought back Mikel, Mikel Gibbons, the relief pitcher that had pitched with them before. Most recently was with the Mets. Speaking of the Mets, they made a minor trade with the Orioles, sending James McCann to Baltimore where he's going to back up Rushman, and maybe if he could get a little bit of dust off of his bat, maybe be able to provide a little bit of pop off the bench. Now, I look at James McCann, and I think he is more of a hitter than he showed over the past two seasons with the New York Mets. I, I like that move from a leadership perspective to bring in somebody that you know has been around. Um, I don't like him as a number one catcher, and that's why he's perfect to play a, as a backup to Rushman. So I look at the Orioles pitching staff, and the thing that stands out to me is that there's two pitchers that aren't going to be on the opening day roster that I think are going to have very major roles on this team. Um, I look at John Means, who really has been their best pitcher over the past couple seasons, threw a no-hitter not that long ago, obviously had Tommy John surgery last year. We don't know when he's coming back this year, but Means, anywhere close to what he was at his best, is an absolute ace on his staff. And the other the other pitcher that I think should get a little more of, of a conversation about is D.L. Hall. D.L. Hall was a top prospect of the Orioles a couple of years ago. Has kind of fallen off a little bit in regards to the hype. Made his major league debut in, in the 2022 season. Uh, pitched mostly out of the bullpen. 
but uh, has a live arm, really has still, I believe, at this stage of the game, number one type of stuff. Um, he's a first-round draft pick in 2017. He's 24 years old. He'll be 25 in September. I think if the Orioles are able to become or be this season a legitimate contender for the AL East, not just kind of hang around in regards to being a wild card. What they did last year was outstanding. It certainly deserves a very good golf clap and cheer, the whole thing. But if they want to win the AL East this year, I think they're going to need a major contribution from Hall, which we'll see at some point in the season if he is ready. The rest of the rotation is going to be headlined by Gibson and Irvin, who were brought in to mostly eat up innings. Dean Kramer, Kyle Bradish were very good last year. A lot's going to be asked for them again this season. And Grayson Rodriguez, their top pitching prospect, has got a very good chance of making the roster opening day. Um, obviously, the, the more they get out of him, um, he really has the ability to be the leader, the number one on that staff. So if there's a point where Rodriguez and Means and Hall all together are one, two, three in that rotation, the Orioles are going to be kind of in that uh, you know 90 plus to 100 win expectation year in and year out. Their bullpen, Felix Bautista took over the closer job after they traded um, Jorge Lopez last year. Uh, CNL Perez was very good for them. So was Dylan Tate, the one-time first-round draft pick. Gibbons, I mentioned earlier, maybe Hall a little bit out of the bullpen if they, they gradually start to work him into the mix. Darwinson Hernandez is over from the Red Sox on a minor league deal. Um, listen, I think pitching is going to be very important. There's a lot of offense in the AL East. If the Orioles are able to hold their own in regards to keeping, let's say, I don't know, hitters out of the ballpark, keeping runs down. Um, we could expect a lot of the same for the Orioles in 2022 three and that we saw in 2022. In regards to their offense, a full season from Rushman as not only a middle of the order bat, not only their starting catcher, but the consummate leader that he's become is going to be very beneficial to the Orioles this year. I think there's a whole different outlook when it comes to the Orioles um, this year as opposed to last year just because of Rushman. Um, you look at some of the guys that had been mainstays in their lineup, Cedric Mullins, the All-Star, Anthony Santander, um, Ryan Mountcastle, Austin Hayes. They're all back this year. And Gunnar Henderson, one of, the, one of the top prospects in all of baseball, will be their starting third baseman this year. Probably more promise at that position than anybody since the likes of Manny Machado. Um, Kyle Stowers is going to get some DH at bats. He's had 20 home runs in the minor leagues each of the past couple seasons. Um, I like the thought of Jorge Mateo getting a little bit of a chance to um, get a little everyday playtime. This was somebody that was thought of pretty highly by the New York Yankees organization, um, was a, a relatively high prospect. Now, played in 150 games for the Orioles last year. I, I, I don't know what his ceiling is, and I wonder if the Orioles even know at this point. He led the league in stolen bases with 35. I think very quietly is in a position where there's really nobody kind of uh, bugging him for, for the job there. So we, if they go Mullins, Frazier, Rushman, Santander, uh, Mountcastle, Henderson, Hayes, Stowers, and Mateo. I think that's the probably the best lineup going forward. Ramon Urias and the aforementioned McCann probably headlined the bench. Franchi Cordero is over from the Red Sox on a minor league deal at one point. Was uh, expected to be a major league regular. We'll see what he has to offer. Same could be said about Daz Cameron. You know, high draft pick from the Detroit Tigers. They moved on from him. You know, the Orioles is a good place for a, for a second chance. And there, there are some at-bats available in the outfield. You know, Santander, Hayes, um, you know, even looking at Stowers, who pro is their projected DH, they could probably move some guys in and out there. Nomar Mazzara is on a minor league deal. Obviously, he's been a major league regular for a handful of seasons. I don't have to say too much in regards to their top prospects. Henderson and Rodriguez kind of headline the class. They are two major league ready dudes that – really are have a chance to be part of the face 
of this young Baltimore team going forward. Jackson Holiday was taken with the number one overall pick uh, last year in a draft. Uh, Col Colton Kowser and Jordan Westberg, an outfielder and a shortstop, respectively, have got some 20 home run pop in the minor leagues. And then uh, the before mentioned DL Hall, who I think will be a major wild card when it comes to uh, this team. So let's get into the past ball show, the 30 to 1 MLB countdown previews. We'll be back with you soon.